I'm going to show you how to build this circular 3D text in After Effects. I'll take you step by step on how to apply the text to a circular path, make it 3D and use a clever combo of text animators, all packed neatly into one layer. And stay tuned, I'll be showing you some unconventional, experimental techniques to take your 3D text to strange and creative new places. Let's get stuck in. Start with a new comp. I'm using 1920 by 1080 pixels with an off-white background and a frame rate of 25. Select the text tool using Command or Control T and click the comp window to add a text layer. Type your text out. I'm using the font Forma for this, available on Adobe Fonts. Keep in mind that if you are using a single short word, it may have to be repeated. I'll repeat my word three times, which I found has worked well. Select the ellipse tool and drag it out to add a mask, whilst holding shift to scale it proportionally. Remember to turn caps lock off if you have it on. Hit V for the selection tool and roughly align it to the center of the composition. Let's toggle down the text properties and path options, then change the path to the mask. If your text is too bunched up or doesn't fit around the circle, don't worry, we'll fix this a bit later on. Toggle on the 3D icon of the text layer, ensuring the 3D renderer is set to Advanced 3D or Cinema 4D. Toggle down the text layer, Geometry options and change the extrusion depth to 60. Click Animate and check Enable Per Character 3D. Now we need to add some text properties to orient and position the text into a circular shape. With text selected, hit Animate and select Anchor Point. Drag the Y value down until the mask circle aligns with the center of the text. We'll name this Anchor Point to keep things organized. Again, with text selected, let's add a rotation property. Rename it to Rotation Constant and change the X rotation to 90 degrees. Hit R and drag the X rotation value to get a better view of our 3D text. Send to the anchor point with Command or Control Option Home or by going to Layer, Transform, Center Anchor Point in Layer Content. As we can see, the text is bunched up, or yours might have a gap, and we want it to be seamless. We can simply increase or decrease the size of the text like so, until the spacing looks even across the text. You can use the 3D handles to rotate the text and preview how it's looking. Yeah, this looks good. Now let's add some punchiness to the design by adding colors to the text. To remove the lighting on the text, toggle down the text, select material options and turn off accepts lights. These are the colors I'll be using. I'll include the hex codes in the description if you want to use them. Select text and add a side color like so. Toggle down Range Selector and Advanced and change the smoothness to zero. Now we can drag the end value down until only one of the words has the side color applied. Rename this property to Color1. Collapse Color1 and duplicate it twice with Command or Control D. Or however many times you want, depending on your amount of words. Toggle down their range selectors and adjust their offset value so the color covers every word. Change the color for each of the side color properties. Now select color 1, add a property and select front color. Repeat for color 2 and 3. Change the front colors. Do the same for each color property, but let's add a back color this time. I'm going to make the back color the same as the front for this instance.
Let's jump into animating the text. And don't go anywhere, because after this, we'll explore some wild and underrated techniques that really stretch what text property can do. Hit R and add a keyframe to the Z value at the start. Drag the playhead out to around 8 seconds and change the value to one full rotation, so it loops seamlessly. Let's add a rotation text property. Rename it to X Rotation. If you want to rotate all the text as one, you can simply keyframe the X Rotation as zero at the start and one full rotation further on. We can add a loop out expression to loop it like so. However, you might want to stagger the rotation character by character. Let's hit Command or Control Z to undo these keyframes. Change the X value to one full rotation. Toggle down the range selector and advanced. Make the shape ramp up and easing to 80% either side. Now we can keyframe the offset value at minus 100% at the start and plus 100% at around 5 seconds in. You may have noticed something isn't quite right, and that is the rotation anchor point seems a bit off center. Let's toggle down the anchor point property and change the Z value to 30. But why 30? 30 is half of our extrusion value, meaning the anchor point will be in the center of the text on the Z axis. To create the staggered scale up intro, we can add a scale text property. Change the scale to zero and name it scale up. Toggle down range selector and advanced. Change the shape to ramp up with an easing of 60%. Add an offset keyframe at the start and change it to minus 100%. Use command or control shift and the right arrow five times to move 50 frames along. Change the offset value to 100%. Making sure the text layer is selected, add a null. Here I'm using Motion Tools Classic, a free plugin from Motion Design School. Hit R and add a keyframe for Y rotation at the start. Change the start keyframe to minus 270. Move 50 frames along again with Command or Control Shift right arrow and change the value to zero. With the keyframe selected, hit F9 to easy ease. Go to the graph editor and drag the ease out value all the way in to 100 and the ease in value to zero like this. You may want to tweak the orientation values of the text layer to get something like this. Let's add the trusted and noble free texture from sourcelab.shop to top it all off. We'll need to add a solid as a background first. Hit Command or Control Y to add a new solid and make it the bottom layer. Drag the source lab texture in. Make the blending mode overlay. Change the scale to 30% and rotate it to 90 degrees. Add a repertoire effect and make each value 2000. Blend the borders by 50% to smoothen out the edges. Add the levels effect. Drag the input white value in to bring back those colors. Let's also drag the middle slider to the left a bit to lighten it up. Something like this works well. All right, we've got the basic 3D circular text animation down. Now let's level it up. If you want something that really stands out, you're in the right place. So far, we have been adding multiple separate text properties, but what happens if we stack them within one animator group? 
This is where the fun begins and it's a very powerful method which can get some interesting and unique results. Let's duplicate the text layer, unparent it to the null and hide the previous one. Toggle down the text properties and delete X rotation and scale up. Add a new scale property like so. Let's name it Scale Y. Uncheck Constrain Proportions and change the Y scale to 400% to get a nice exaggerated scale up. Toggle down Range Selector and Advanced and change the shape to Smooth. We'll go with an Ease High of 50% and an ease low of minus 100%. Add an offset keyframe at the start and change its value to minus 100%. Move around 80 frames to the right and change the offset to 100%. Let's loop it with a loop out expression to the offset value. Now here's where the magic comes in. Instead of selecting animate and adding a new text property, you can add a property within the scale Y property. Select scale Y and add a front color. I'll go with a deep pinky red for this. Now you can see as well as the text scaling up, it also changes color using the exact same settings as a scale up animation. But let's take it a step further. Making sure scale Y is selected, add a rotation property. Change the Y rotation to one full rotation. As you can see, all three properties are happening simultaneously. To loop it in a more visually pleasing way, we can simply duplicate the scale Y with Command or Control D. Hit U to bring up the keyframes and move the duplicated ones 40 frames along. So it's in the middle of the first ones, like this. We can also change the second front color of this new stack property. Search for color and change one of the scale wire colors. Of course, feel free to go well with this. There are no limits to the ways in which you can stack the text properties. We're not done just yet. Let's dive into some other cool experimental twists you can add to this circular 3D text. If you enjoy this video and want to learn more exclusive motion graphics tips, don't forget to subscribe. First, I'll show you how to make this 3D text vortex. Duplicate the layer again and hide the text layer below. Let's delete the scale Y properties for a clean slate. Under text and path options, we can disable the mask for now to get a better view of what we're doing. Double click the text layer to highlight all the text. Copy with Command or Control C, hit the right arrow key and paste it with Command or Control V. Add a line spacing property and rename it to line spacing. Change the second value to around 220. Enable the mask path again. You can hit S and R to adjust the scale and rotation of the text to your liking. And you may also want to adjust the position. If the colors of your text aren't aligning anymore, don't worry, we'll fix this shortly. Let's expand the text out even more. Select all the text by double clicking the text layer, copy it with Command or Control C. Hit the right arrow, then the Enter key and paste with Command V. Repeat Enter and Paste until you have enough copies of the text. You can hit S and R to adjust the scale and rotation of the text to your liking. To animate the text expanding out from the center, Add a keyframe for the line spacing property at the start and one at about 80 frames in.
Change the start value to zero. Select the keyframes, go to the graph editor and create a strong ease out like so. To get the twisty vortex effect, make sure text is selected and add another line spacing property below the existing one. Add a keyframe for the line spacing property. Drag the playhead out and change the first value to around 350. Name it line spacing 2. Alright, I must have messed up the pasting. Happens to the best of us. No big deal, I just double click the text, hit the right arrow and tap backspace a few times to fix it. Now to fix the colour issues. Search for end. Let's increase the end values until the black text disappears. Yeah, this looks good. Now let's look at how to repeat the text vertically to form this nice cylinder shape. Let's copy and paste our very first text layer, hide the other layers and delete the X rotation and scale out properties. Unparent it to the null. Search for extrusion and increase it to 100. Hit R and reset the orientation values to zero and X rotation to minus 90. Remove the Z rotation keyframes and add this expression time times 360 divided by 8 plus index minus 1 times 20. This makes it rotate once every 8 seconds and rotates it by 20 degrees every time it's duplicated. This will make much more sense in a minute. If your animation is different from 8 seconds, you can change this value to your animation length. Let's pre-compose the layer and call it text cylinder. Now, here's another top tip for easily repeating layers. Enter this expression by alt clicking on the position stopwatch. This means that every time we duplicate this layer, it will move 200 pixels down. Select the layer and hit command or control D four times. As you can see, they move down by 200 pixels and rotate by 20 degrees each time. Select them all and move them up to the center. Let's go back to the main comp toggle on continuously rasterize and make this pre-comp 3D. Now we can control the whole cylinder of text. Center the anchor point by hitting command or control alt home or by going to layer, transform, center anchor point in layer content. Let's also scale it down a bit. To make it wiggle, we can add the expression wiggle 0.590 to the orientation value of the precomp. And that's it. We've built a circular 3D text animation from scratch, styled it with dynamic colors, stacked text properties for layered effects, and even pushed it into more experimental territory with vortexes and text cylinders. Found this helpful? Feel free to give it a like or drop a comment with your thoughts and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. As always, if you want to support the channel and what I'm doing here, as well as save yourself a huge amount of time, check out sourcelab.shop. I've got a bunch of retro VHS tools, frame by frame elements, time saving project files and some free resources that might help you on your next project. Links in the description. I appreciate you being here. See you in the next one.